Hey folks, I thought I'd do a video today about drones. Uh, they play a really important role in my design practice, both my, for my farm but also for other clients. <clears throat> and I recently um, upgraded to, um, or some people might say downgraded, I'm not sure, but the uh, DJI Mini 2. Um, they just came out with the Mini 3 and uh, I was just recently at a client's house and uh, our client's property and one of my subcontractors used a Mini 2 and I never honestly would have considered using this device until I saw them using it and uh, it got me thinking and so anyways I thought I'd do a bit of a, a video on comparing these two guys first off um, so this is the DJI Phantom 4 um, and again this is the DJI uh, Mini 2 um, and then talk a little bit about how this technology has really transformed my design process and how I look at the land and um, how I see opportunities. So um, <clears throat> the DJI 4, I think this is close to four pounds, um, it was a beast of a machine and this absolutely transformed the way that I looked at, at properties and, and was able to provide value to, uh, to clients. Unfortunately this beast, actually I had one before this, I've had two Phantom 4s, um, it fell out of the sky and uh, and then I bought this one used and it's uh, fallen out of the sky twice um, so the 4 was a fantastic quadcopter while it lasted um, but I'm not sure what goes on inside of them and, and why they just some days decide that they uh, no longer want to be in the sky um, the the fact that it fell out of the sky a couple of times and I've even heard of people who fly these professionally uh, where they kind of these things lose their mind and they, they go straight up and they can go up to you know 10,000 feet these things they, they, they can climb very very high if they go haywire um, always made me really nervous you know because I've flown on airplanes before and you can imagine what would happen if one of these guys went into uh, a turbofan what would happen to that airplane and so having thousands of these things uh, in the sky um, where I don't know what the the frequency is but I'm just gonna make something up one in every 10,000 drones decides to lose its mind um, the probability of hitting an airplane goes up quite drastically and it might still be a really small probability but um, that risk didn't exist before there were drones like this and so um, that's always made me really nervous about flying drones and, and so I, I'm actually really supportive of the regulations that exist uh, in Canada and, and in the United States in terms of education you have to take and the licenses you have to have in order to fly these things and it's basically almost the same as a pilot's license I mean you don't have to go to school for four years to, to become a, a drone pilot but you have to uh, adhere to certain rules and regulations that um, that other pilots would have to adhere to uh, when you're flying an aircraft of this size. Um, and I did take the training and after taking the training it's one of the reasons that I started hiring out my drone pilots uh, as opposed to doing the work myself. Now I've become so reliant on drones that um, uh, because it really does change how you you view your land um, when you're trying to lay out a property uh, right now I'm sitting in my zone one and especially when we get into kind of zone one design you're trying to place a lot of elements into a really small space and you're placing them in a way that allows one element to relate to another element and it's really beneficial to lay that stuff out on a program like Google Earth Pro and um, What's really cool about these drones is that you can actually fly, you know, one, two, three, five, ten, even 160 acres with some software I'll talk about shortly that stitches together a whole bunch of photos and allows you to see how your, man, this cat is just itching for attention these days. I don't know, every time I come outside he wants to be given some attention. Um, either that or he wants to be on YouTube. Um... So what was I saying? Basically, when you're laying out a lot of elements in a really small space, it, it helps to have a way of capturing the spatial relationships. And 
In engineering, when we do design, um, if we're coming in to do an addendum to a design, so adding on to something that already exists, um, we call the first set of plans that we produce a set of as-built plans. And so those are plans that indicate how things are built as they are right now. That's why we call them as-built. And so we bought this property as-built. Uh, it came with a house and a shop um, and a couple of other outbuildings. And with the purchase of a property that has existing assets on it, um, you also end up with liabilities uh, that come along with that property as well. And so, you know, I'm sitting in a bit of a, a swale that I had to dig last year. This is a drainage swale that removes water from my yard because water was pooling here and causing damage to the foundation of the house and damage to the foundation of the shop. And so I've regraded this whole space. It's not done yet. It's uh, kind of in the middle of, of construction. Um, but <clears throat> coming up with those insights partially is sitting out in places like this and just being quiet and, and looking at things, which I do a lot of. But it's also uh, getting an aerial image um, of where things currently are so that you can start to understand how to place things in relation. So when this came out and then I just recently saw it, I got really excited because this little guy, I'll just go back over to here. This one here, I think by the time I got my batteries, the iPad that I needed to run it, um, you know, I'm probably in three or $4,000 for this. And then you add a second unit to this, which I bought used and I'm definitely at $4,000 for that, which is a pretty hefty price tag to pay uh, you know, just for a tool that you might use four or five times a year. Now I happen to make YouTube videos and so I can justify a little bit more expense for some of my equipment. But this DJI Mini 2 has a couple of really big advantages over the four. Um, one is it's super tiny size. <clears throat> and while if I was doing this professionally and going and flying people's properties, I don't know that I'd want to go with such a small platform. Um, but for a few YouTube videos and some of my own as building, um, you know, it's perfectly fine. And so it's, it's really small. Um, it takes incredible photos and videos. I've been absolutely amazed at what this little sensor in here does. It's very stable. Um, it's probably not as stable as the Phantom 4 in higher winds, but you really shouldn't be flying your drone in, in high winds anyways. Um, and so I just make sure that I'm always looking out for the weather before I take this thing off. Um, it's 249 grams, which is an important number because uh, in Canada at least, when your drone is under 249 grams, it's not regulated. And so you don't need to uh, get a license to fly this. And so they've obviously deemed that this size of a drone is much less riskier than that size of a drone, um, which makes me really happy. And so I'm mostly just flying this on my property to demonstrate things for YouTube and or um, get those as built. And then the other cool thing with this is that it works with a piece of software I use called Maps Made Easy. So Maps Made Easy is, uh, in my opinion, a very disruptive piece of software. It's very inexpensive to use. Uh, it basically takes control of the drone after you've drawn a map out. And you can look this up and I'll put a link down in the show notes below. Um, I won't make a tutorial on how to use it because there's lots of them that already exist. But basically, you place this thing on the ground, you go into Maps Made Easy, you draw the boundary that you want to uh, to draw. Look at that, I'm just a cat magnet this morning. There's two cats around me now. I think they know they're safe from the dogs when they're hanging out with me. Um, so you draw a boundary around the area that you want to map out, and then it uploads a mission to the SD card on here. And this thing will fly around in a, in a grid and capture photos uh, in the process called photogrammetry uh, that are geo-referenced. And then when you're done, it comes back down. You upload those photos into a piece of software called Maps Made Easy, which is a cloud platform, uh, meaning that it's not resident on your computer, it lives on the cloud. And it stitches them together and it produces a series of digital outputs. And those digital outputs, uh, one of which is a uh, photo um, ortho rectified uh, stitched photo of the property. So again, you get all the buildings on one piece at one image as opposed to having, you know, 300 images, it stitches them all together. 
And from there, one of those outputs is a KMZ. And so you can bring that KMZ in and you can start to uh, edit and, and play around with the spatial orientation of things in Google Earth Pro, which is a free piece of software. And that's really awesome. Uh, if that wasn't enough though, we can actually send these images off to Contour Map Generator. So Contour Map Generator is a piece of software that we developed, uh, Danilo, Dakota, and myself, uh, to produce really high-end contour maps. And so we can take the digital elevation model that this produces and produce a relatively accurate contour map um, in some situations. Some, there's going to be situations like forest cover where there's high forest cover. We won't be able to produce a contour map with photogrammetry. We need technology like LiDAR to do that. But for properties that have basically just grass or garden, um, not a lot of three-dimensional space, photogrammetry works absolutely incredible. And so because this is so inexpensive, you know, five, six hundred bucks for this unit, <clears throat> uh, and then it leverages the phone that you've got it. Um, Maps Made Easy does require an iOS phone, unfortunately, so it doesn't use both Android and iOS. <clears throat> but if you already have an Apple phone, then for six hundred bucks, I think this is worth every penny because <clears throat> you'll save it in design, just in how effectively you're able to place elements on your property because you can track how those elements relate to each other as you build them. And for me, um, uh, in my opinion anyways, design is never done. And so you start with a design in your head or on paper and as you implement, new opportunities and ideas come up along the way. And you're constantly pivoting, constantly pivoting, constantly changing, constantly modifying. And so I find that having several photos of my property as I'm going through that process uh, year after year is really helpful to make sure that I'm always you know, optimizing for my latest insights. <clears throat> and honestly, like if I had a, you know, an unlimited amount of money and I implemented the first design that I came up with for this property, it would never be as good as uh, taking my time uh, you know, observing new information on a regular basis. So what this drone produces, what my mind and my eyes see uh, every day that I'm out here working, um, the insights that I have when I wake up in the morning um, or when I'm driving um, long distances. I mean, that's those are always when my insights happen. Um, all that time that I'm investing into the system, uh, my designs are getting better. And so uh, I highly recommend if you have the budget uh, and you're looking to design your property and you're looking for some hacks on how to make that easier and, and improve the output of your design, checking out this, uh, this Mini. I know they just came out with the Mini 3, which is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, and it's always tempting to, to you know, go that next level up. But now you're over a thousand bucks and uh, things are starting to get expensive again. Uh, you literally can't go wrong with a small little unit like this. Some of the the things that you're going to find limiting with small drones like this, I mean one of them is going to be the size of the sensor of the camera and so sensor size is going to influence the quality of the imagery. Um, but again if you're flying at high noon, um, the wind is really low and uh, you're, you're relatively slow as you're taking your photos, um, for what you're using it for which is a, a, a high definition and I, I say that <coughs> you know with air quotes because when you look at the imagery on Google Earth um, it's just not really all that great. I think it's going to improve over time with the number of satellites that are going up, but uh, Google Earth Pro just doesn't have great imagery. And so the uh, having a drone like this, uh, even if it is small and may not be kind of DJI's best offering, is going to produce uh, a photo of your farm or property that is orders, and I say that plurally, orders of magnitude better than what Google Earth Pro has. And the other thing you'll notice on Google Earth Pro is that, uh, you know, the images might be three, four years old, and so it's not going to have the most recent updates on your property. Sometimes it will, sometimes it doesn't. And so this allows you to take that into your own, uh, that control into your own hands. So I highly recommend it. Um, it's not a paid promotion. I don't get paid by DJI to do this video. So, um, uh, yeah. <coughs> um, I'll leave a link to 
I'll leave a link to ContourMapGenerator.com uh, down below. You can go get uh, very inexpensive contour maps to your property. Depending on where on the earth you are, depends on how uh, accurate those maps are. So do check out the preview before you go and buy one. Um, if you don't have good data on your on contour map generator um, and you do end up getting a drone or hiring a drone operator to come fly your property, get in touch with us. Um, you can uh, contact info at uh, vergepermaculture.ca and they'll put you in touch with our mapping department and uh, you can send your digital assets from your drone to them and they will help you to produce a contour map after you've send, sent it through Maps Made Easy. I'll also send a, or put a link to Maps Made Easy down below. They don't also don't pay me for this, uh, this promotion. Um, and uh, check it out, check out their videos on YouTube and um, see if this is a fit for you. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, leave them in the comment section down below and we'll see you guys in the next video.